Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. In this flight I'm going from Lyon to Geneva, a very short flight. It was originally supposed to be in like an ultralight or a glider, but I have this French plane, a Dewoitine, I don't know how to pronounce it, D-E-W-O-I-T-I-N-E 520. And look at this cockpit, this is a very nice cockpit. Uh, you can see the French on the dials, very very nice and uh, it is freeware and on the outside we have a tiger livery which is sort of fancy but has uh, many different liveries including a bare metal one and uh, this particular model is from Beber on the uh, explain.org forums so B-E-B-E-R is the username and yeah I, I couldn't resist and we're gonna be leaving France after this so this is my last chance to use it, so I'll use it on a relatively quick flight, and I won't do an ultralight instead. Uh, we'll s maybe I'll get a chance to do the ultralight uh, somewhere down the line on another flight, but of course it has to be a short flight because I don't have that much patience. So anyway, uh, we'll be flying this a tail dragger. That's a little bit of trouble. I never fly those properly. Um, we do have flaps. And uh, I'm continuing with the Apollo 12 audio, uh, picking up from where um, Al Bean had just reported that the RCS seemed to be firing quite a lot, and he was concerned about propellant consumption because their propellant gauge doesn't actually read inside the command module. And also he reported that uh, he was uh, taking an anti-congestant and because he was feeling stuffy. I wanted to make sure that would be all right prior to landing on the moon and going out and doing the moonwalk. So uh, with that we'll pick up the audio and I will begin this flight. We've got the data up in the corner again and uh, I'll eventually work right, in your feedback about that. The uh, surgeon rec recommends that we uh, take one of those every eight hours so eight hours after you took Another one, and it should be just about time to take one more just before the EVA, so that's the recommendation. Also, uh, we're interested in getting Biomed, and we're wondering if we can turn on Pete's Biomed. We're not getting any Biomed, we don't know why. Don't wake him up, but uh, we wondered if you could get us some Biomed from him easily. Uh, no, he's down at his sleep station and it makes it a bit uncomfortable to get the bio bed uh, down to there so he's not even connected to it. That's why you're not getting it from P at all. The only person you've been getting it from is Dick. Uh, Roger, we uh, didn't get any for a long time there. Okay, and on the thrusters, they look good. We're checking further, but uh, to first approximation, uh, things look fine. Now remember, Pete Conrad was having irritation with the biomedical sensors. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to head back to sleep, Houston. So uh, the only person you'll have bio bed on is Dick, I guess. Roger, thank you. Hope your uh, nose clears up. So, a bunch of different problems they're having. Uh, uh, that seems to be getting to the top of the dial, pilot. so I'll tone now it down a bit. Reporting. Uh, some stuffiness. Uh, he said he did not think he had a cold and uh, advised that he had taken a decongestant pill several hours ago. Uh, the flight surgeon recommended... I don't know uh, what the speed limit on this is right now. Maybe I should look it up. A pill approximately eight hours after taking the first and then one more just before beginning the uh, lunar landing portion of the mission. Uh, Al also question does on the uh, propellant usage he noted that the RCS thrusters seem to be seem to be fire firing regularly in lunar orbit and uh, as you heard uh, the advice from Capcom Don Lind was that uh, everything looks good with the RCS thrusters and with the uh, propellant usage So this was first introduced, uh, it had its first flight in 1938. And obviously made for World War II. Well, 
this is Apollo Control at 98 hours, 26 minutes. We have continued to uh, monitor that solar flare that we reported to you on the last uh, Looks revolution. like maximum speed is 302 knots. Uh, we have gotten a report from the uh, radiation support room here in Mission Control that the flare would now appear to be classified as a relatively small one. Uh, we've also gotten several other positive indications. Uh, one we would have expected by this time had there been any significant uh, high energy particles to begin receiving some of these at uh, the spacecraft sensors. Uh, at the present time we've seen no indication of any radiation, particle radiation uh, in the area of the spacecraft based on onboard instrumentation. Also we've seen no change in the uh, radiation levels being monitored by the ATS-1 satellite which is in a synchronous orbit about the Earth and also no increase in radiation measured by Explorer 41, which is in a high elliptical orbit around Earth that takes it about a third of the way out to the moon. This has a max takeoff weight of a just 2.8 tons. Had, uh, a call from the spacecraft, as you heard, uh, lunar module pilot Al Bean called down at 97 hours, 55 minutes, and reported that uh, he had observed a regular thruster firing and asked us to check the status to see if the spacecraft was perhaps consuming more RCS propellant than would be desired. Uh, after reviewing the propellant status and the number of thruster firings, uh, uh, flight controllers reported that all is normal, just about what we would expect, and the propellant usage is about what we would expect. Being also advised that uh, he had some stuffiness and uh, some head stuffiness, nasal uh, congestion. He said he had taken a decongestant pill several hours ago and uh, requested that we provide him with a schedule for continuing to take decongestants uh, up to the lunar landing. Uh, the flight surgeon recommended that he take an additional decongestant tablet approximately eight hours after taking the first one and uh, take another one then just before beginning the powered descent. At 98 hours, 28 minutes, this is Apollo Control. So the engine in this is a V12, a 950 horsepower. It's, it's not bad. Not really top of the line in World War II, but not as bad as some other French planes. <laughs> Uh, this is Apollo Control at 99 hours 5 minutes. Uh, we have had loss of signal now. The spacecraft uh, on the 8th revolution of the moon and the crew is uh, about two hours now from the end of their scheduled eight and a half hour sleep period. But during this uh, LOS period, we plan to play back the tape recording of the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment Package briefing, which was held this morning uh, in the Houston News Center. Uh, we understand the tape runs about 30 minutes. We expect this uh, LOS to last for something on the order of 45 minutes. Uh, we'll play back that uh, tape of the ALSEP briefing for you now. I don't know if we've got the tape for that. This is Apollo nope. Control at 99 hours, 52 minutes. We've had acquisition of signal from nope. the spacecraft. They skipped recording uh, that. ninth revolution of the moon. Uh, we expect the crew will uh, remain uh, sleeping through. So, foothills of the of Alps revolution. here. Uh, they're scheduled to uh, awake at 101 hours, which is a little more than one hour from now. At the present time, Apollo 12 is uh, at an altitude of 64 nautical miles above the lunar surface. Uh, we show the orbit be 55.9 nautical miles by 64.4 at the present time. We'll continue to stand by for uh, any conversation from the crew, uh, but as I said, we don't expect uh, anything 
probably for about another hour. I thought I heard a wake-up call there, but anyway, right in the background. I always wonder, all these little, uh, little town, well, villages, hanging out at these dramatic locales. How exactly it feels to be living somewhere like that. I'm, I'm a city folk, so. This is Apollo Control at 100 hours, 41 minutes. We have a little more than 22 minutes now before loss of signal with the spacecraft. A few minutes prior to LOS, if we have not heard from the crew, we plan to uh, wake them up. Uh, the crew will then uh, have breakfast. The uh, lunar module pilot and commander, uh, Al, Al Bean and uh, Pete Conrad, will begin putting on their pressure garments. And about the middle of the 11th revolution, uh, they're scheduled to enter the uh, LEM, begin powering up and checking out in preparation for the lunar landing. All spacecraft systems have continued to function normally during the uh, eight hour sleep period. Uh, several hours ago, Al Bean came on the line to advise that uh, he had a bit of nasal congestion, uh, congestion in the head, yep. and uh, planned to... No, I don't uh, want clouds. ...had taken a uh, decongestant tablet and planned to continue taking them up to the uh, beginning of the powered descent. Uh, Bean also checked on propellant consumption uh, RCS propellant consumption at that time. He reported that he had noted uh, regular firing of the RCS thrusters and wanted to check to see that everything was normal. We advised him that uh, it was, that the thrusters were firing about as often as we would expect and the propellant consumption was about nominal. At uh, 100 hours 43 minutes, this is Apollo Control. We'll be standing by for the awakening of the crew. We're still over France right now, um, but we are approaching Geneva, more than halfway there already. Like I said, very this short a, flight. This is Apollo Control at 100 hours, 54 minutes. Uh, Capcom Don Lind is preparing to put in a call to the crew shortly. Uh, we'll stand by for that. Maybe they were getting this ready ahead of time, and that's why I heard in the background. prominent river here. That's the Rhone River, R-H-O-N-E, I believe. Apollo 12, Apollo 12, this is Houston, over. And it does come out of Lake Geneva. And in fact, we'll be following it up. Apollo 12, Apollo 12, Houston. Good morning. For a little ways. They're going to have to play that trumpet call again. Apollo 12, Apollo 12, this is Houston. Good morning, good morning. These guys really do like to sleep in. Good morning, Houston. Oh, well. there we go. Good morning, gentlemen. Today's the big day. Hit the deck. <laughs> right here, we've been there for a while. Ah, okay. Very good. We've got a couple of items for you when you get your eyes uh, wide open. Okay, I'm ready I think we can already see the airport. Uh, question about your uh, biomedical sensor that you reported uh, moving the other day. Uh, is it still holding in position? 
Yeah, I want to talk to you about that this morning. Uh, go ahead with the rest of the questions, then I'll talk to you about it. Okay, that was one of them. Uh, one of the other items was that uh, while you were sleeping, we had a uh, Class II flare reported on the sun. We watched it very carefully uh, in your behalf, and we get no particles coming uh, out of I think the river should have some sort of so flattening uh, and should actually be water. No, nothing to report coming your way. Sort of a class problem here. The uh, surgeon is uh, recommending... Okay. The surgeon is recommending that we change your uh, biomedical sensor, but what do you have to say about it first? It shouldn't be the photo scenery. The water should be well, its own thing. I, I've already moved the sensor, and uh, I'm developing a little bit of a problem with all of them. Uh, I've uh, never had this problem before, but uh, something in that goo is uh, uh, allergic. My skin's allergic to it, I guess. And uh, I finally had to move the upper one because uh, it broke out underneath it. And I guess I was weeping plasma or something, and it finally uh, started weeping over the side. It's been bothering me uh, for the last couple of days. Now, all of them are in the same category, and I don't want to move them. I don't know why these textures are so low res. We are now in Switzerland. This low res patch is basically on the border. I know what's going there. That seems to be causing a whole lot of... Well, maybe that's what's... It's an electrical power station, but that's rather complicated. Oh, right here is the airport. And uh, the one I moved uh, is the one on the top of my chest, and uh, it's all broken out up there. Now, I don't want to take the rest of them off, because I'm afraid what I'm going to find underneath. So Sounds pretty I dire, to be to honest. <laughs> Sounds are. a bit icky. And uh, when we get done the EVAs down there, I want to get rid of them. They're driving me buggy. You can tell. Roger, uh, we're going to talk that one over for a second. We're about two minutes from um, LOS. Just in case we should lose you a little bit early, we expect to pick you up again at one zero okay. one plus four niner. So, Roger. right here, I'm over France. Okay, I've already moved that. This one. is France and, uh, right now. My, my, uh, this little bit. The kid's in pretty bad shape underneath it. It's, uh, it's still weeping. Whatever you weep plasma, I guess. And uh, I don't want to move the other ones. Roger, just a question on, on that. So when you moved it, did you put on a new seal and new jelly? That's affirmative. Very good. <laughs> he sounds surprised. And then... Uh, right over right here, over I'm here, over uh, Switzerland again. We'll see on the other side, uh, 101, uh, it's a pretty thin Roger. sliver of uh, Switzerland that we've got here. This highway is the A1. Guess it must be important. And the lake is, of course, Lake Geneva. Roger, Roger. You can tell uh, Pecan Red does not want to give the impression that anything should delay or otherwise cause problems for the EVA. He will gladly handle the blisters or whatever. Uh, as long as he gets to walk on the moon. <laughs> that time the spacecraft will be uh, in its tenth revolution of the moon. Uh, during that exchange with the uh, crew, Pete Conrad reported that one of the biomedical sensors attached to his chest 
uh, had been giving him trouble. Uh, as you heard, he said that uh, apparently there was some sort of allergic reaction to the uh, jelly that's used to attach the sensor, and uh, he had broken out underneath it. Uh, we're uh, evaluating the, uh, the situation with respect to the sensors at the present time and plan to have some sort of recommendation to pass up to Conrad when we reacquire. So this here is the city of Geneva in at, front of uh, us. At 101 hours, 5 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. And despite the shortness of the flight, I will attempt a landing at this point. Not really doing this plane justice, but here we are. This is Apollo Control at 101 hours, 48 minutes. I wasn't going to pass up on the Mirage either. Revolution of the moon. We're coming up on 1 minute 45 seconds until we re reacquire the spacecraft. Uh, during this revolution, we'll be talking to the crew uh, concerning their crew status report. Uh, so, uh, we'll have some further conversations with Pete Conrad about the uh, biomedical sensors and the irritation that uh, he reported on the last revolution. Uh, the irritation associated with the uh, location where the sensors are attached to his skin. The crew is also scheduled to eat breakfast uh, during this revolution. Uh, there will be some housekeeping type activities aboard the command module and early on Rev 11. Uh, Dick Gordon is scheduled to don his spacesuit. A little later on uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean will also begin donning their spacesuits in the 11th revolution and they are scheduled to enter the lunar module about midway through the 11th rev and begin powering the up needles are so fancy too we're now 35 seconds from reacquiring we'll stand by for acquisition This one anemometer gauge I'm not too Follow sure about. Augusta, it seems read. stuck where it is Hello, right now. I, I, maybe it's a... Uh, no, well, I don't know what that's about. Apollo 12, Houston, anyway, on your um, biomed sensor situation. Uh, We've got a few words for you if you're ready. Go ahead. Okay, uh, the recommendations uh, of the medical people here are that uh, you remove the two side, the respiration sensors. You can go ahead and take those off completely and treat the areas with uh, your first aid cream. And if they're weeping, you can go ahead and uh, cover them with a Band-Aid or something. Uh, the, uh, the ones on the blue lead, they recommend you do the same thing with those, remove them cover them with first aid cream and uh, Oop, I don't want to go up. put a band-aid on them if they're weeping Whoa. and then relocate okay, those okay, with a whole okay. brand new system let me just stay in the and, cockpit and uh, that way you'll have a good clean system with a minimal chance of itching beginning immediately in a new area I need to re-trim a bit if you don't like that this particular proposal uh, they have no objection to you sticking to the way you wanted to do it of just leaving it where it is Uh, Jerry, just uh, uh, the, I want to stick with it the way it is. It works. Uh, the respiration leads on my sides are, are the least ones that are bothering me. I've moved the one that bothered me the most, and uh, the best I can describe that area is it just it looks like I got a one-inch round patch of very bad poison ivy. The rest of them aren't anywhere Doesn't sound that great. They're, they've been bothering me, but uh, uh, they work. I uh, just soon leave them where they are because uh, the area that I moved is raw and I have covered it with a band-aid, but I'm a little bit worried about getting my sides exposed even with band-aids with that LCG on. I think that the sensors themselves will do better protection just the way it is. And when I get back up, I'll take them all off and switch them around. 
Okay, Pete, that's fine. We're uh, we're satisfied with that then. Is this supposed like to be that. like really low speeds or something? Yeah, this one, the main speedometer. Now, Roger, looks very good, Pete. And it's in kilometers per hour, obviously. I think that's what's going on there. I don't know why okay, I need I a like separate speedometer for low speeds. So. Uh, let me give you the uh, sleep report. Everybody had seven hours across the board. And the uh, PRDs were from Commander through LMP. Oh, there's the runway. 11016, 11015, 04017. The uh, checklist has been complete. We uh, dumped the water to 10%. We purged the fuel cells. We cycled the fans. And we're just finishing up breakfast right now. Roger, Pete, sounds good. Uh, we'd like to get a little more medical information from you if we can. Uh, First of all, uh, we wanted to get a little more word on how Al's doing with his stuffiness, and uh, is anybody right. else suffering from any stuffiness? Uh, that's uh, negative, and I'll let you, uh, nobody else is stuffy, and I'll let you talk to Al direct. Okay. Uh, I've been a pretty stuffy. Yeah, Houston, uh, that I've seems to be the case. That's head. just Every a since, uh, finer speedometer. I guess for I landing. I going to go away in a couple of days, but it never did. I don't sneeze, cough, or have any other symptoms. It just seems to be fairly full in the ears and the nose. Could use some extra uh, marks on it, though. I tried a couple of decongestants, and they work well, but uh, I didn't know exactly how far apart to take them. Right now, my ears is, are clear, and my uh, uh, nose feels real well. I've, I've uh, taken two of the pills. Eight hours apart, and then I've I don't know what the stall the, uh, speed of this spray, is. So it looks like we got it licked right now. Okay, Al, that's what we were going to suggest, is that you uh, take your pills eight hours apart and uh, use the spray, and uh, we just hope that takes care of it for you. Still uh, going next, down uh, at this we pitch. Had from the medical people is, uh, how did speed you guys up. sleep? You got seven good solid hours, or uh, was there any fitfulness at all? It doesn't like being at this speed, to be honest. Uh, we're all sleeping real well up here. As a matter of fact, we're overslept, I think. <laughs> That's great. Oh, they did oversleep. I thought so. Today is a real switch from Gemini. I uh, never slept at all in that thing. And boy, I crawled down here in that lower, underneath the uh, couch and just disappeared for eight hours. Uh, Roger, uh, the doctors say that you ought to space your Actifeds now every six hours instead of every eight. That's for Al, Roger. Uh, how often can you use that spray? I kind of wondered that too. Uh, Al, use that about every three to four hours. If you can space it to four, fine. If you need it, Ow. go ahead and use it every Ow. three hours. Uh, tail dragger hop. Okay, well, don't have to worry. Uh, I, it's real clear now, and it stays clear as long as I uh, use the pills and things. So. Uh, Looks, uh, looks good for the rest of the okay. trip. Uh, no, that sounds fine. Oh, Al. Not okay. I don't think he's. I don't think he's had anything. I, I it seems to us. Uh, we've <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job of this more one. More like uh, maybe a little, little bit of dust is floating around in here or something. So uh, maybe just making him stuffy. That's a little bit different than being on the ground. Uh, can you stop not now? Not anything on the ground, but Plane, that's what it appears to be. Please. Please tell me I'm on the ground. Uh, Roger, Pete. Oh, is Al oh, putting ow, on his LCG ow. now? His biomed doesn't look too dandy. Okay. God, how many hops was that? No, he's just laying here eating breakfast. We'll uh, smarten him up before he gets in it. Roger. Okay. Well, we uh, made we it without busting uh, the gear, at least. Okay, we're working on that. Uh, while you're waiting, I've got a flight plan update for it you. It looks like I can actually turn it. That's good, too. That Mirage update. did not want to turn on the ground. Ready copy, go ahead. Uh, Roger, uh, while you're copying, give us poo and accept, and we have some up uplinks for you. First flight plan update is Frau Moro Photos. You got it. Tango 1 is 102. Okay, three, I'm gonna zero, pause it as they're doing two, that six. stuff. Tango 2 is. There.
talk about taking photos, I guess. So we have arrived at Geneva, and the next time we'll be using a slower plane to really enjoy the landscape and fly to Sion. I don't know how it's pronounced. It's S I O N in Switzerland. And this is not a productive path for me to follow. Okay. I'm just gonna park it off to the side here. And as it goes over there, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.